All right, so um, today we're looking at the normal distribution, um, the last part of our probability topic and also our last little bit of new information um, for the year. So well done to you guys for getting to the end of Maths B. I'm sure there's been um, some tricky times there So, and it's been a big step up for you guys doing the 10 periods of Maths next year. So well done on getting there. Um, today our learning intention is to use the 68-95-99.7% rule to make calculations with normally, normally distributed data. Um, first I'll tell you what the normally distributed data is and then we'll get into that rule. Um, before we get started, I just want you guys to think about what you already know about spread of data. So have a look at these questions here. Um, I've got a few data sets below there. Um, so just think about which one would have the highest range, which one would have the largest, largest interquartile range or IQR. And then um, the last part there, part C, um, could be a couple of answers there, but which would, which would you say has the largest spread from those data points? There could be more than one way of answering that one. So pause, have a think, Check that you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about spread of data. So here's our new information today, the normal distribution. Um, so the idea here is that um, if we plot data, I'll just get rid of that so you can see. Um, so if we say took the height of every student in the school and plotted their frequency on a dot plot, their shape would appear to be distributed in a certain way. Um, so a distribution describes the frequency, therefore the probability at which events occur. Um, there's many distributions, but um, a really, really common one and most important is probably the normal distribution. Um, as it comes up in nature, um, manufacturing, all sorts of contexts, and it's a really fundamental part of probability and statistics. Um, so this is sort of, here's an example of what you might be looking at here. So notice on um, the vertical axis there we've got frequency, and then on the horizontal we've got height. So you can see here um, there's very, very few people that are, 153 centimeters or shorter and then you can start to see as we go between 153 to 161 it starts getting a lot more common and then you can see the vast majority of people um, fall within that 161 to 163 centimeters and then you can see it starts drooping off again and it looks pretty rare for people to be um, more than 201 more than two meters tall so that's what we're looking at Now what you call is this shape is a bell curve. So you might hear people say that kind of thing. Oh, you know, I've got to fit the data to a bell curve or I've got to fit the test scores to a bell curve. Um, and this distribution is called a normal distribution as in like the stand, like as in like the most common or the most normal um, because it occurs just so much in nature. Um, so when you're graphing the frequency of many sets of data, you'll have this bell shape in your data. Now, just to check that you're understanding everything, um, pause, just consider with what height occurs most frequently in the distributions below. So can you read this graph and see what is the most common height for people to have? So I hope you got that as 170 centimetres tall because you can see here that is the highest frequency where the frequency is the highest, 177 centimetres tall. Um, now we'll go towards how we sort of build up this. Um, so that's normal distribution. We'll go towards how they build up the next step now. So something you've got to know is mean. 
so remember mean is your average it's when you add up all the data and then divide by how many data points there were then you got standard deviation you don't need to know um, everything on this slide what I'd say the key point is is that standard deviation is a measure of how far data is spread from the center so if you have a big standard deviation, the data is far from the mean. If you have a small standard deviation, the data is very close to the mean. So what we're sort of ha what we're doing here is this um, x bar, as we said earlier, that represents the mean. And then what we're doing is we're subtracting each of the data points from the mean, then squaring that, summing that all up, dividing by how many data points there are, and then taking the square root of that. So it's just about, um, yeah, the distance the data is from the mean or how spread the data is from the mean. Um, so once you know about um, the mean and the standard deviation, you can do a lot with, a, with normally distributed data, which is a lot of data that you get. Um, so here's an example here of what I might help you understand what, um, a high standard de deviation and a low standard deviation might look like. So this one on the left, this would have a low standard deviation um, because if you are really close, here's your mean, you can see that most of the data is really close to the mean. So that one's a small standard deviation. Whereas this one here, here's our mean, and we can see the data is way more spread out, far away from the mean. So this one would have a small standard deviation, and you see this little sign, omega for standard deviation, or you might see people write standard deviation, and this one would be a large standard deviation. All right. Now we're getting into our um, 68, 95, 99.7% rule. So that second part of the learning intention, here it comes. So when you've got normally distributed data, um, a specific percentage of data lies within one, two, and three standard deviations of the mean. So let's have a look at this first point. 68%, it's roughly 68% of data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So either one standard deviation bigger or one standard deviation less, that's 68% of your data. So just over two thirds of the data, so only one standard deviation from the mean. Now, if we're talking about two standard deviations away from the mean, that's when 95% of our data lies. And then the 99.7% rule. Now we can see if we are going three standard deviations less or bigger than the mean, that's going to include 99.7% of our data. So nearly everything is going to be within three standard de deviations from the mean. So I, I think I'll show you, this always helps with an example. Um, so feel free to pause and give this one a shot on your own. Actually, I'm going to open this one up on my whiteboard because it's always easier to use than the PowerPoint slides. Um, so let's go to the whiteboard. All right, so have a shot at this one. We've got a room full of people and we found that their heights were um, distributed normally. So whenever you see those keywords, distributed normally or normal distribution, then you know this 68, um, 95, 99.7% rule applies. So it's saying we've got a mean of 170, so that's important information and a standard deviation of 10.
So now we want to fill in these gaps. So I'm going to start by, and this is a really great diagram to draw for these sort of questions. So draw yourself a little bell curve. And I'm going to start by labeling in the mean. So it says the mean, this mu or X bar is another um, symbol that we use to represent the mean. So this is right on 170. And then now this says plus one standard deviation. So it says the standard deviation is 10. So the mean plus one standard deviation, that'll be 180. The mean minus one standard deviation, that'll be 170. Subtract 10, 160. Um, plus two standard deviations. So that'll be 170 plus 20, 190. Subtract two standard deviations, we're down to 150. All right, so now we've got our bell curve with our mean labeled in. Now we also probably want to go ahead and um, draw in what we know. So Oh, let's, let's jump into it. So it's asking us how many percent of scores are between one standard deviation from the mean. So hopefully we wrote down our, um, our rule. So that is 68%. We remember that from our rule of scores are between one standard deviation from the mean. So that is representing... That's representing one standard deviation from the mean. So that's 160 to 180. That'll be our 68% in there. So that's heights between 160 and 180. Next, it's asking us um, how many percent of scores are between two standard deviations from the mean. So within two standard deviations from the mean, here's two, here's two. So we know from our rule that this represents 95% of our data. So 95% of people are between 150 and 190 centimeters. That includes me. I must be pretty short because I don't fit within 68% um, within one standard deviation. Um, so I must be in the bottom third of height, but I do fit within the 95%. So that's nice. Um, then we have finally here. How many percent of scores are within three standard deviations of the mean? So within three standard deviations of the mean, that will be our 99.7% rule. And that makes sense, right? Look, there's not many people you would know um, who would be less than 140 centimetres or more than two metres tall. Next example. So, uh, again, give this one a shot. 
This one relates to Year 12 study scores. So upon completion of each subject, you will get a study score out of 50. And they're distributed normally. The mean is 30 and standard deviation is about 7. This is a bit of an approximate. Um, so they do... They don't take into account scaling, and this is about plus minus 3%. So it's pretty accurate, but not 100%. So what that means is if you get 30, you've scored above 50% and below 50%. You're right in the middle. Um, so we want to know what percent of students score above 37. So again, it's a really good idea here to draw in your diagram to get started. And you might want to go ahead and write in the study scores underneath. So the mean is 30, so that's what we'll put right in the middle, the most frequent. Then if we subtract 7, so within one stand, let's take away one standard deviation. So we'll get 23 here and 37 here. Let's add another 7, another standard deviation, 44, and then 23, subtract 7, 16, plus 7, 51. This is what I'm saying with the, it's almost accurate, but not 100%, and then 9. Hope none of you ever get study scores of 9 or below. Now let's jump into our answers. So what percent of students are above 37%? So we know we know that 68% of students are within one standard deviation away from the mean. So if we want to know how many are above here, well, let's do 100, subtract 68, because you've got 100%. Let's see how much we've got left. That would be 32. And then we'll, half of these 32 will be bigger than 37 and half will be less than 23. So that means there must be 16% on either side. Like I'm dividing that 32 by 2 to get 16. So 16% will be bigger, 16% will be smaller. So what percent would get above 37? That would be 16%. So it's not many only 16% of people will get above 37. Um, what percent of students score below 16? So here's 16, that is two standard deviations away from the mean. So we know from our 95, 68, 99.7% rule, Pretend that's all the way to the end there. We know that 95% of students will get in between two standard deviations away from the mean. So how many would be left? Well, then we'll do 100. There's 100%. We'll do 100. Subtract 95. We've got 5% left, and then we will do that 5%, and, and that would be 5% in total. So let's do that 5% divided by 2, 2.5. Two 
to figure out how many, that means they'd be 2.5% bigger and 2.5% smaller. All right, so what percent of students score below 16? That will be 2.5%, so not many. 95% of students will obtain a study score. Well, this is just reading off. The hard bit is putting the mean in and then your um, standard deviations away. Once you've done that, it's interpreting. 95% of students, will they get between 16 and 44? So only 5% of people are getting above a 44, like two and a half percent, very rare. And now finally, let's, I guess, um, put this into a little bit of an experiment. If we had 1500 year 12s, how many would you expect to get between 23 and 37? So between 23 and 37, we would expect 68% because that's within one standard deviation from our mean. So that means we're expecting 68% of 1,500. Um, I'd say this is probably going to be a calculator question. So I'm just going to type this into my trusty calculator on my phone of points as 0 0.68 times 1,500. And that is 1,020. So that's most out of your 1,500. Now there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys here. And it's just this, um, sometimes, you know, in this example, I've had to split up the percents, um, you know, with the 68, well, that means there's 16 on either side. So I just thought um, I'd show you this. It might be useful. It's just the normal distribution. I'm um, just broken up into the small parts. So instead of like the 34% being in the middle and then the 16 is above, um, this could be a useful bit of information for your notes. So feel free to add that in. And then I'll save the review for class. Um, I hope you're having a great day. And I'll see you soon. Oh, yeah, for the work on this one, it will be um, a handout that I'll give you. Okay, bye.